The basic unit of command inside PowerShell are called commandlets. All commandlets have a verb dash noun format. So you can see here our very first command that we'll learn is called git dash command. So I'm going to highlight this and execute it. At the bottom, you'll see in my output window gets filled with all the commands that PowerShell can execute. And you can see there are a lot of them. Well over 2,000 commandlets exist in the PowerShell infrastructure, and you can add more through the use of modules, which we'll learn more about later in this course. Now, because there are so many here, you can actually trim this list down some. Here you can see I'm using git command with a parameter called verb. All parameters can be named, or like many programming languages, that name can be optional. And in this case, the parameter is called verb, and the value I am passing in is called git. So now at the bottom, you can see that what my list returns is all commandlets that begin with the word git. And you can see there are a lot of them. Now I can also limit my output by instead of using the verb, use the noun. So here I'm going to highlight my git command, and this time I'm going to use the noun parameter, pass in the value service, and you can see now I have all of my service related commandlets, git service, new service, restart service, and so forth. When running git command, you may spot a command that you're interested in. So the next thing we need to learn is a second commandlet called git help. Git help takes one parameter, the commandlet that you want help on. So now I can run this, and at the bottom you will see the help for this particular commandlet. Let me just scroll up here to the top. And you can see it has the name, and then a synopsis gets all commands, and then it breaks out the true syntax. So you can see at the bottom we have uh, a dash argument list parameter, we have a dash all, dash list imported, so there's all sorts of parameters that you can pass in to get help. Some of these that you pass in aren't exactly parameters because you don't pass in a value. Instead, they're what are called switches. A switch provides additional information to a commandlet without actually passing a value in. So here we can have get help, and you'll see I'm passing in a switch called dash examples. Now I don't need to pass any value in for this. This switch just says, hey, when you run get help, for the commandlet git command, I want you to include all of the examples that you have in the help file. So when I run this, I'm going to scroll up and you're going to see there's example 14, example 13, and so forth. So lots and lots of examples out there. I can also have a variety of other switches. Here you can see one, if I use the dash full, it's going to dump everything about this out there. As a matter of fact, let's actually come here so you can actually see all the rich detail that you're given with the help. So tons of information out here that you can retrieve. This is, though, a little awkward to use if you're trying to go back and forth between referencing the help, going back to your script, referencing help, going back to the script. With PowerShell version 3, they introduced a new switch called online. So here you can see I have git help, and then for the git commandlet that I want the help for, I'm going to get the dash online. And when I run this, here you can see your default browser will appear and is taken to the MSDN documentation for the particular item that you're asking for help. So here in this case, git help for git command, so git command is appearing. And if I scroll down, you can see we get a nice detailed description, parameters. Everything's laid out very nice and easy to read. The information in here is exactly the same as what you get in the text mode. As you can see, though, it is much easier to read. 
Be aware, though, that oftentimes for, say, a system administrator, may be operating on a server that doesn't have access to the Internet. In those cases, the text-based option will be your only option, and it's good to know that both exist. Returning to the ISE, we'll scroll down and see that most commands also have a little bit of a shortcut. They have a dash question mark switch. So if I run this, what you're going to see is the git help for git command. It's just a nice little shortcut for getting more information on a particular command. So with git command and git help, you can begin to explore your PowerShell world. Now I want to show you over here to the right how this relates to this little command window over here. Over here on the right, I'm going to type in git dash command. And as you can see, it automatically filters for it. When I click on it at the bottom, it then shows me all the parameters for it. So again, using this, I can then easily create the command that I want to run. Let's actually emulate the git help that I had a moment ago. So I'm going to type in git dash and you can see I can click simply come and click on the one I want. And down here I can say, well, what do I want to get? Well, let's do the full list. And the particular item I want might be git dash command. And I'll click on insert. And insert will insert this into my interactive command window. And I can type in this and it's going to run it and get that information. I can also click on copy it to copy it to the clipboard, which will enable me to insert it into my script. So as you can see, the commands window provides a really nice way to learn the commands, to learn all the parameters as you go along. Now for the remainder of this course, I'm going to go ahead and close the commands window. Since we already have the commands all typed out for us, I want to have as much screen real estate as possible to keep showing you these various things.